Did you know the best way to get bouncy UK flow is by layering this wobble with a slower one like or that this Ableton rack lets you use a sub bass as the main sound of the drop. If you didn't, this video is perfect for you because we're making UK inspired 140 dubstep like Hamdi and Skrillex. And this all starts with a rhythmic vocal like Next, set the BPM to 140 and chop the vocal up so it sounds a little bit more like yeah, it sounds kind of like that chick from D Antword. Remember them? What a throwback. Ambient vocal in the key of the song. Put a clap on every third beat. Hi-hat on the grid. And a faster hi-hat groove to layer with it. Also, this bass that I'm going to show you how to make with a telephone vocal filter on it. And because you're too busy making fire beats, a busy signal as a final layer. Have this go on for around 16 bars, mute everything at the end, and put in a glitch sound as a pre drop. And all together, While this isn't a recreation of UK-based dubstep from 2009, Hamdi's music does a great job of reminding me of the early days of dubstep, back when I actually discovered it. Because a kid in my class who was a big raver was like, yo, you gotta listen to this stuff, and he put on Zed's Dead for me. And that was the first time I heard any kind of music with, like, thick bass. Next thing I knew, Wednesday nights meant hitting up Zed's Dead bass mentality events. Had a sketchy little dive called Wrong Bar, fake ID in hand, and on on one of those nights, they booked this kid named <laughs> My life changed forever, but it's been a while since then. And music evolves, and so does dubstep. And this style is closer to what Hamdi, Skrillex, and Peekaboo have been doing with their recent releases. And you'll hear this most during the drop. Kick, but make it mega short and deep. Copy over the clap from the intro, and make sure to put a delay on it. Cause it's not really dub unless it's doubled up. The same hat on every beat, layered with another hat, which is closer to a two-step garage beat. Oh my gosh. Two-step hi-hat, dub snare, dub. Two-step, dubstep! Also bring over the fast hi-hat groove from the intro, but add little chops and pauses right before the second beat for a shuffly feel. And if you do that right, all together the drums will sound like, hey, if you're ready to move on from posting Instagram clips of your music and actually get them onto streaming services like Spotify, Apple, and Tidal, well, you can do that through this video sponsor, DistroKid. That's right, thanks to longtime friend of the channel, DistroKid, you're able to upload the music you've been working on to all the streaming services. And since you're watching this video, you can get a little discount. So when your music's ready to release, use DistroKid to get your songs out into the world. For only $23 a year, you can upload an unlimited amount of songs to those platforms. Oh, but what about record labels? I want to be released on there. Well, you know, some of them steal everything you own. And with DistroKid, you actually keep 100% of the royalties and more importantly, ownership of your masters. Plus, record labels want to see if you got any clout ahead of time anyway. So racking up some numbers independently will only help you. Plus, there's a ton of bonus features included with your subscription to help polish or even promote your music. So sign up through DistroKid right now and you can get 7% off your first year using my VIP link down below. As always, thank you DistroKid for sponsoring this video. And all together the drums will sound like... 
Onto the bases. Unlike NA Bro Step that got super popularized by Excision, Skrillex, those guys, there's actually barely any layers or chunkiness to these bases, meaning they're super clean. And I don't need to be an absolute sound design demon because we're just using basic shapes. Basic shapes? Really? Dude, you're such a scrub. Do you even produce? I don't remember installing this plugin. To be honest, it's not even that creative. It's repetitive and boring. It needs real American sound design like Virtual Riot. He's German? America, baby! Excision, yeah! Woo! I can see why he likes the uh, loud, aggressive style of dubstep. Also, Excision's Canadian. That's right, the secret to great music is not in loud, aggressive noises. Another one? Ugh, I gotta stop downloading every plugin that I see. Here in the UK, real dubstep is about the vibe and we achieve that through proper music theory. Yeah, it's not exactly. See how the notes selected allow for chromatic steps between the root note. Okay, yeah, keeping the song in F minor. Actually, we are in F sharp Phrygian mode, which allows chromatic second within the scale and stay in key. Well, okay, yeah, that's the point. Generally, when writing dubstep drops, you pick a note that you anchor to. In this case, it's F sharp. And depending on the intro, if you want to sound heavy and dark, you keep it locked to a minor key. But that's NA dubstep and UK dubstep tends to have more than one note. So in planting notes from the Phrygian scale, we include a half step interval that pulls into the main note and that's where you get Hamdi's sound. Right, little bits of melody, Phrygian scale, and boom. UK dubstep. <laughs> What the frick is this guy even talking about? Screw theory. It's all about the sound design. How are you gonna forget about FM would sync from A to B and use the stereoizer for wideness so that way you can bring in the... Okay, you want sound design? Here's sound design. Oh, but don't forget. Quiet, you. So for this bass, it all starts in a wavetable synthesizer like Serum. There is also Vital and Wavetable in Ableton, but they essentially do the same thing. Set oscillator A to basic shapes. Set the wavetable position to a square wave. Octave down one. Then on LFO number one, make a shark fin shape like this. Make sure you set it all to these settings. And if you've watched any of my other sound design videos, you're gonna know what I'm about to say. Map LFO to the volume. That's gonna sound like this. The difference in wobbles comes from automating the rate, which is something you can experiment with to get a nice rhythmic flow. Now to add some more texture to the sound, we're going to use the warp knob, clicking this and selecting FM from B. Turning on oscillator B, going to analog and picking a sine wave. You can also do this in basic shapes and just pick the sine wave, but this one is flipped, bit of a different sound. Back on oscillator A, turn up the FM from B knob. <laughs> and you can hear the difference that makes. I've also set the warp mode to sync and adjusted the octaves to spread like this. I don't know why I put plus 12. That just, that's the same as octave plus four. Ash, what are you doing? Sometimes you get in a sound design rabbit hole and you do stuff that you don't even realize. We can also use the filter here to add additional movement. And a little bit of that more vocaliness. The womp womp womp. The last step, turn on all of these effects. Feel free to pause champ. Now to add to this flow, we have another synth donated by the stream team, and it's just locked to quarter notes. And that just helps anchor the flow that we built with this main sound. Next, add the vocal chop from the intro. Using Ableton's Spectral Time plugin, set the trigger mode to onsets. Turn the freeze on and the sensitivity to 55%, so it catches every transient of the vocal. From here, adjust the dry wet until you get a cool metallic delayed rhythm. This gives some awesome background texture to the song. And all together. <laughs> Pretty good, but the reason this song works is the theory- Actually, no! This is sound design- Shush! Whether or not the song works because it's theory or sound design, in the end, 
it's actually a balance of both. Just because you're good at one or the other doesn't take away from your ability to make music. There are multiple ways and tools you can use to make up for your shortcomings. And the more songs you make, the better you start to understand everything. And once we understand, we can evolve this drop because it's too boring, repetitive, NA baby! Woo! So we can add variation by copying this bass bass onto a new track so that we can mess around with some settings without messing up the original bass. Like this one where I just turned up the sync a lot, made it way lower and then layered it with this alarm sound. At this point, we're just experimenting and automating all of the things like the frequency knob on the phaser, which gives some really nasty vocally basses. <laughs> And it's so poetic to me that a newer artist like Hamdi has a song with Zed's Dead. So I made modifications to that bass synth to make it sound a little bit more like Zed's Dead. Stuff like this tape saturation distortion. <laughs> changing the shape of the LFO so that it's got a bit more of a roundedness to it. And mapping that same LFO to an EQ bump in the mid-range for extra vocaliness. <laughs> During the variations, it's all about experimentation with different rhythms and sounds. Here's one where I automate the phaser frequency so it's lower. The thing that has in common still though is that chromatic pull from the G to the F sharp to add that unification with each variation that you have in the song. Hamdi even has sections where he just has the sub bass play. And you can make this work with any sine wave with my new sub spice rack so your subs can be heard and felt at the same time. Top it off with an auto pan to add extra movement. You've got the sub as the lead. You can also add some final touches by strategically incorporating vocals in the pre-drop and during fills. And with this, we finally ascend to true UK bass. So what's this drum beat? Can't headbang to it. Please no. Yeah, I'll put everything on the beat. Kicks on the stairs. Yeah, America. So you're gonna do only quarter notes. <laughs> hey yo, get Flodan on the track. Do you even know the contributions Flodan has made to dubstep over the years? <laughs> I don't care. Sounds cool though. America number one, baby. Woo! Whatever, as long as you're having fun, man. Sometimes tough not to be like the UK guy and say, hang on, you're not allowed to enjoy that because you don't know where it comes from. Exactly. Obviously, US music lacks substance and groove and is just a means for heaviest song ever. Um, but as a true American, we value complex sound design that your puny little Plus boy, subscribing bro, to bro, theory bro, will much better Ray suit. Whatever, just let these guys continue arguing. If the music is good, it's good. It doesn't matter if you're UK, EU, NA, US. And while my Canadian self sits somewhere in between, since we are technically NA, but also super England pilled at the same time, you know I couldn't help but try and sneak in as many vocal Easter eggs that are just recognizable enough so that this song is sure to pop off at any festival. Hey, and yes, that includes Floden. <laughs> Because you never know how someone gets into the things that you enjoy. Even if it's Floden showing up on the new Skrillex songs, leading people down the UK bass rabbit hole, or if you've been an OG when he popped up in the grime days, everyone discovers stuff differently. And it's our job not to gatekeep, but to welcome them. Because inspiration tends to come before education. And I think we'll all be better if we do that. Maybe we should gatekeep. Now go make some bangers.
Dun 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 d